All right, let's take a look at the situation where we have a roller coaster cart, which is going to coast down a hill, go through the bottom of some trough, and then come up over the crest on another hill. And what I want to do in this problem is solve for two things. The first thing I want to do is solve for the normal force between the cart and the track as this cart passes the point A. Then we're going to solve for the maximum speed which the cart can be traveling at B so that it remains in contact with the track. The first thing we're going to do is draw a free body diagram of this cart as it passes point A. So as the cart travels through point A, of course there's going to be a normal force acting upward on the cart. And it's that normal force which we're trying to solve for. But what people forget about in this problem is that there's also gravity acting on the cart. And because there's two forces acting on this cart, you can't simply set one of the forces like the normal force equal to the centripetal force. Remember, the centripetal force is in fact the net force on this cart. And it's that net force which is going to cause this cart to accelerate centripetally. So if we say toward the center of the circle is positive, what we have is the normal force in the positive direction and gravity in the negative direction. And those two forces combine to be the centripetal force. Now we can solve for the force by gravity on the cart. And subbing that in we get this expression for our net force. Now on the right side of the equation we've got centripetal force so we can sub in our given values here. Where the mass of the cart is 250 kilograms, the cart is going 20 meters per second as it goes through this trough, and the radius of curvature at this point A is 15 meters. So rearranging this for Fn we get the normal force at A is 9116 newtons. Now moving on to point B, what we're trying to do here is solve for the maximum speed which the cart can travel over this point without flying off of the track. So again we're going to draw a free body diagram. So as the cart goes over the top of this hill, it's accelerating downward. Now gravity is going to continue to act on the cart. See, so now gravity is going to be acting on this cart no matter how fast the cart goes over the top of the hill. But if the cart goes over the top of the hill slowly, there's going to have to be a normal force acting upward on this cart. And if the cart goes too fast, the cart's not going to stay in contact with the hill. This is effectively going to become a jump and the cart's going to go careening off into space over here. So at just the right speed, when the cart isn't going too slow and it's not going too fast, there's not going to be a normal force between this cart and the hill. The cart will go up over the top of the hill and right at the top here, it's effectively going to be in free fall, meaning the only force acting on the cart is going to be gravity. And then it's that force by gravity that's going to act centripetally. So now that we have the force by gravity equals this centripetal force, we can simply expand out both of these terms. You'll notice the mass of the cart doesn't matter. And solving for the velocity, we get this expression, the maximum possible velocity of this cart that will keep the cart from shooting off the ramp as though it's a jump and not a roller coaster. So I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.